So hi everyone, welcome to my final presentation. Today I'll be talking to you all about the work I've done over the summer as Project Nexodus Docs and Project Aspen. So I'll first talk about as Project Nexodus Docs where I leverage LLMs for documentation question and answering. So I looked at three main strategy for question and answering tasks. The first one being extractive, where one extracts the answer directly from the documentation based on its similarity to the user inputted question. The next one I looked at was generative, where the LLM generates an answer not explicitly found in the documentation. Um, an example of this that you're all familiar with is ChatGPT. Lastly, I also experimented with abstractive question answering, where the LLM generates um, an answer based on the user inputted question and context, with the context being extracted directly from the documentation. So you can think of it as a hybrid of extractive and generative question answering. So for each of these strategies, I had a choice of either using a pre-trained or fine-tuned model. So for those of you who don't know, a pre-trained model is a model that someone else trains, usually a large company that has access to a lot of training data. Um, and then fine-tuning is, um, so LOMs are typically pre-trained on specific domains and tasks such as task generation, text generation and question answering. So we might want to train our LLM to adapt to our data and tasks. And traditionally, adapter tuning has been the preferred strategy for fine tuning, where we add more layers to the pre-trained model and train the weights only in those additional layers. However, that has several drawbacks, um, the primary one being inference latency. Um, the more layers in our model, the longer it takes for the model to generate an answer, which is why fine tuning with LoRa or low rank approximation was proposed as an alternative, where instead of adding more layers to our model, we simply update the pre-trained weights in the model. So how it works is that the model takes a user input X, which is a question in our case, and then multiplies it by the sum of the pre-trained weights W and um, the update weights delta W, and then outputs um, an answer to our question Y. But we have to be a little clever about how we update the weights in the model because LLMs typically have billions of parameters. So even if we would were to update a portion of those weights, it would still be extremely resource intensive and um, impractical. This is why during training, we decompose the update weight matrix delta W into smaller matrices A and B. And this allows us to reduce the number of trainable parameters. So here's a practical example. Consider you have a 100 by 100 matrix delta W, which is again, your update matrix. This would mean that we would have to train 10,000 total parameters. But if we were to decompose it into um, smaller matrices A and B, which are 100 by one and one by 100 respectively, we would only have 100 parameters to train in each or 200 in total. And after training, we simply combine A and B back into Delta W and then merge the pre-trained weights with the update weight matrices um, in order to alter our weights. So now that you have some background into the different question answering strategies and how they work, let's um, evaluate the performance of each of these strategies against each other. Um, so here I've displayed um, different evaluation uh, metrics um, comparing each of the strategies to one another. Um, I should note that I decided to split the generative strategy into pre-train and fine-tune, just so that we can see whether fine-tuning the pre-train model with Laura would make a difference. I won't get into the nitty-gritty details of what each of these metrics mean, but just know that they're contradictory. 
And that's because human language is very difficult to evaluate quantitatively. Um, not only do we want the outputted answer to be composed of similar uh, words to our ground truth answer, we also want it to be semantically similar and have coherence. So I decided to create a web application so I could quickly test out um, my different LLM strategies with a click of a button. Um, this is for my own personal use and for research purposes. It's not ready to be deployed, but it's an interesting way to view the different um, outputs generated by the strategies I was interested in. So I'm gonna go ahead and play this recording. So I first inputted my Hugging Face API so I can pull my models from Hugging Face where they're stored. And the first strategy I'm testing is extractive. Um, and here I'm just uh, copy and pasting one of the sample questions and generating an answer. And now I'm testing out abstractive, which again is a hybrid between extractive and generative question answering. And here, before I generate an answer from my fine-tuned model, I'm clicking on the feeling lucky button so I can generate an answer from the preaching model. And again, this is just to compare um, the different outputs and seeing whether um, fine-tuning actually improves in performance. So hopefully it's clear to you that the outputs that these different strategies are um, either nonsensical or incorrect. Um, and while this is unideal, um, it definitely provides insight into how much training data um, is required to get these different strategies to um, production quality and also confirms the need for human evaluation of LLMs. And um, I'm looking forward to building upon this work for the rest of my internship. Um, and collaborating with the AC teams to figure out what's going on under the hood um, of LLMs. So switching gears to my other project, Project Aspen, where I analyze bus factor, I'll first introduce what Project Aspen is. Broadly speaking, its mission is to analyze data from um, different open source projects to empower contributors and participants to make data-driven decisions about open source uh, communities and projects. So I was interested in analyzing the bus factor or how high the risk is to a project should the most active people leave. In detail, it quantifies the amount of contributors a project can afford to lose before it stalls by hypothetically having these people get run, in, run over by a bus. Typically, it's the smallest number of people that make up 50% of contributions and a user persona that would be interested in this uh, metric would be a project manager, for example. So contributions is pretty vague. So we chose to define it as um, uh, commits created, issues created, and pull requests. So here I've analyzed the top 10 contributors in the Ansible repository. So each donut chart represents um, the top 10 contributors as well as the other remaining contributors according to that perspective. And some key insights we can derive is that there appears to be a trend in the top 10 contributors across all perspectives, meaning that we see the same contributor IDs in the top 10 for uh, each perspective. And this might raise some concern um, since we have the same uh, people in the top 10 supporting the Ansible project. Um, and another insight we can derive is that the proportion between the top 10 and other contributors for each perspective generally matches our intuition. Um, for example, the majority of contributors for issues created 
um, are the other contributors, whereas uh, for commits, it's largely the top 10 of contributors. And this makes sense because we often see a more diverse body of contributors um, creating issues compared to making commits. I also analyze bus fashion, bus factor as a function of time. And this because this is because the bus factor often evolves over the lifetime of a project. Um, and here I've depicted an example of the plot that I generated where we're looking at bus factor of commits in six month uh, periods. So each data point on the graph represents the bus factor um, in a six month window. Um, and then the space between each point is a time step, time step size of four months. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy with the work that I've accomplished so far for this project and looking forward to integrating it into 8Knot, which is the web application for Project Aspen. And with that, I conclude my presentation. I want to give a special thanks to Sanjay Aurora, James Kunsel, um, my manager, Heidi Dempsey, uh, the project manager of the research team, Jen Stacy, and my fellow research interns. Um, I've linked my contacts uh, in case you had any questions or concerns regarding my projects. And I'll open it up to the floor uh, for any questions. Um, I have a question, Christina. Um, well, two questions. One is, what was your favorite part of working on both of the projects, I guess? And then what was the hardest part about both working on both projects? That's a great question. Um, I think the hardest part of working on LLMs is that um, no matter like how much research I did, it was hard to tell which like question answering strategy would be the best fit for our data, which is why I decided to like evaluate them all. Um, but I think that exercise was really valuable because it just showed me, okay, all of these strategies are like imperfect in their own way. Um, and then again, that like confirmed the need for human evaluation. So moving forward, I think, um, one of my reach goals is trying to have like human evaluation as part of like the AI ML pipeline and perhaps like being able to create like a web app application like the one I demonstrated um, to have like a user just input evaluation into it and then have like a separate model ingest it and like improve the model that way. Um, and then with the work that I did with Project Aspen, um, I think the hardest part would probably, was probably like the creativity aspect because um, I think bus factor is typically like defined or like, at least for me, it was obvious that we would consider the bus factor of commits, but um, through like working with James, he really pushed me to like expand like my notion of bus factor, as well as be able to define like different parameterized like notions of it. For example, bus factor um, as a function of time, allowing like the user to input like the percentage threshold, um, the time window that they're interested in, as well as the step size. Yeah, if there are no other questions, um, yeah, that concludes my presentation. Thank you all for coming and uh, thank you all for showing your support for this project. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Hey, Christina, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Are there any warning signs uh, for who's going to get run over on? by a bus on the project? Uh, 
Yeah, I didn't show it um, in my presentation, but if you go to the if you go to my Jupyter notebook where I performed all these analyses, um, I print out like the contributor IDs that will get run over by a bus. Hopefully this loads. There we go. So as you can see for um, bus factor in the ner in the in terms of number of commits for Ansible is four. Um, meaning four people would get run over. Oh, wow. <laughs> Good to know. Cool. If there are no more questions, um, this concludes my presentation. All right. I'll stop the recording now.